Hey, what's up folks? Today we're going to take a look at Martin. Martin is a tile server and it's like the, the trifecta of tile servers. It can, it can serve vector tiles straight from PostGIS, it can serve tiles from an MB tiles file, and it can serve tiles from a PM tiles file, asterisk. A little bit more about that at the end. It's written in Rust by the same folks that bring us MapLibre. It's very small, very lightweight, and very fast. You know, let's take a look. First thing you want to do is download the current release in whatever platform you're on. They have binaries for uh, Linux and Mac and Windows. And it's just one file and you just run it. You can configure it a couple of different ways. You can use environmental variables, you can use command line options, or you can use a YAML file. And that's what I'm going to do here. There's not a whole lot to it. You see I've got uh, a couple of little keep alive and worker processes thing on top. I'm giving a connection string. This is a environmental variable I set for my Postgres database. I'm doing this auto publish, which basically means auto publish. Take all your data and make it available. So we start serving that up and it's going to work a second to figure out what all the data is. It's a really, it's basically our production uh, data set on my local Docker image here. So there's lots and lots of layers. But it just takes a few seconds to look through and it is ready to go. It has several different REST endpoints. One of them is catalog and it'll list all the layers. There are a lot of layers in this database. For auto publish, you do have some options there. You can say only show data from a particular schema and a bunch of other options. There are a lot of configuration options available uh, with, with Martin. It's, it's very configurable. So let's go ahead and grab a tile. I just saved some URLs here to make it easier for me to grab a tile. One of the layers I know we have is the tax parcels layer. So I will get over here, grab that, and just save that somewhere. And we can pull that up in QGIS. And it looks like our tax parcels. Neat. Now, one of the really nice things, actually I should pause here and just Look at what we just did. We just pointed Martin at our database and said, uh, I would like vector tiles, please. And it's just serving them up for us as a ZXY request. That's really cool. Martin's also figured out that our tax parcels are in a, a state plane coordinate system and took care of all of that for us. Very, very nice. So we got that going. One really cool thing is you can request more than one layer on a tile. So if we go back to that URL and I go over and put tax parcels, another layer we have is buildings. Drop that in there. It's going to save as uh, that tile, new copy of it. Get rid of that. And pull in this one. It's saying we've got buildings and tax parcels. And there's our buildings and, and tax parcels. Just like that, you can make a multi-layer tile request. This is tricky to do. I've never found a way to do that in Dirt that I particularly liked. Uh, mostly having to do with the columns you're getting from each of the tables. And that's one thing to note here. When you do this auto-publish, you're getting every column in that table. And that's not ideal. You're really making for a much bigger vector tile when you do that. And for most of the time when you pull a layer, you, you don't even care anything about it other than that it draws. So we can fix that though. We can have it specify just what columns we want in the configuration. You can't do it at as part of the, the request, but you can do it in the configuration. So let's go back over and we'll stop Martin and we're going to go back to our configuration. We're going to comment out this auto publish. And we're going to comment in this little section here. What you can do in Martin rather than auto publish is give it the specific tables you want to share along with a bunch of information about them, including what if any properties you want to ship with it. And here for the tax parcels and buildings, I just said ship the GID just, you know, to ship something. 
We'll save this file. We'll start Martin back up. We will refetch that uh, text parcels. Save that as number two there. And there are our tax bottles, parcels. Now we look there, we just see this GID. So that is great. Because if we look at this now, this is 64 kilobytes when it got all the columns for tax parcels. And there really aren't, aren't even that many columns in that table. It's 147 kilobytes. So we're less than half the size. I mean, imagine if your road network is anything like ours, it has like 75 columns uh, in it half of which no one knows what they are, where they came from, but the layer's so old, you're just afraid to delete anything. So that's, that's a, you know, th this is a good thing. So you can configure that so it just gets the columns you want. And since it's being configured that way here, you can do the same thing with, when you return multiple layers from one request, it'll just have those columns in it. Cool. Now let's have a little fun. Let's do some performance benchmarking versus what I'm currently using. Uh, let's go over to dirt and we'll start dirt and let's do some performance testing. We're going to use DDoSify for that. DDoSify sounds scary. It sounds like I've been hanging out in 4chan too much, but it's really just a performance testing tool. Uh, don't use it for evil, please. Let's go and grab this URL or DDoSify for those tax parcels. And we're just going to do 100 over the course of 10 seconds. Oh, you know what? Let's do 200 for, for giggles. Give it a little bit of work. This is, uh, you, you generally want to use some kind of proxying server in front of PostGIS for this so you're not beating the snot out of your server. Let's just put this in here and let's watch it while it runs. If we go look at Martin, we're sitting at 8.3 megabytes right now. Let's run this and it's going to go grab its stuff. We're going up to 9 megabytes, 9.2 megabytes, 1% of CPU. And we got, uh, now it's already back down to 9 megabytes. So it's, it uses very little RAM, Martin does. It's very lightweight. So our average response time is 0.035 seconds. Let's try that with dirt. And I've gotten an interesting result there, the, the, the times I have tried this test. Well, let's go over here and we'll go to node so we can see what dirt is up to is just sitting there bored taking up 40 megs of RAM. So already that's a big win for Martin. So it's doing its thing. Running, running, running. We have zero failed runs for either one of these. This is 200 tiles in, in 10 seconds. Now dirt is 0 0.26, uh, zero seconds. Dirt is actually faster than Martin than uh, in, in, in Doom making tiles from PostGIS. Uh, that surprised me a little bit. I mean, in a way it's neither Dirt or Martin are doing a whole lot here. It's all PostGIS doing all the work. But I, I, I thought Martin would be a little faster. But when you're looking at these time differences, no one in the world is going to notice this hundredth of a second difference. So it's, you're not going to go wrong either way. But on the other hand, dirt took up, it's currently sitting after it's now like 58 megabytes. It is way heavier than Martin. I would trade the RAM usage to go up by one tenth of a second. I would make that sacrifice for using a, a, you know, fraction of the RAM that node's using here. So there's a result for that. Now let's look at MB tiles. And to share MB tiles, there's different options, but it's, it's really easy. You know, MB tiles and you can give it a path. You can give it a path to a specific MB tiles file. Here, I'm just giving this dot slash so it's every MB tiles file sitting in, in the folder where Martin is. So there's several different ones. We're going to use one that's our base tile 
I make for Mecklenburg County and MB tiles. We'll grab a tile from that. That'll be number three here. I will get rid of you and grab this 6477 number three. See, there's a whole bunch of layers there. We'll add them all. This is a, this is our base tiles is what this is. So it's got stuff. So it's serving from MB tiles file, MB tiles file just fine. Let's do some performance testing on that. We'll switch back over to Martin, which is sitting at about 10 megabytes of RAM and try that out. I have too many windows. Too many windows. Let's DDoSify that. And here we're going to give it 10,000 requests in 10 seconds because this is a lot less work on the back end and it should handle this fine. See Martin's up to 30 megabytes. When Martin's done working for a while, it, it goes back down. Like it's already back down to 17. Thank you, uh, uh, really good engineers and garbage collection in Rust. So we're looking at average request time of 0 0.008 seconds. So that is fast. Uh, let's look at how I'm currently doing that with our good old MB tiles server. And grab that. It's a different name, but it's it's the same. It's the exact same tiles. I just named it something different here, so I could tell it apart from the PM tiles. We'll grab that. Let's switch this back over to Node, and watch what Node does here. It's not pretty. It's sitting at 21 megabytes right now. We will send 10,000 requests in 10 seconds at that sucker and 131 megabytes 148 megabytes it'll tops out around 150 it eventually stops it stops around 150 160 and that's where it'll cruise but we're using what eight or nine times the ram and we are a good bit slower we're martin is 0 0.008 and emmetile server is point 017 so an order of magnitude faster martin is while using way less ram so that's a big win for martin now the last one is pm tiles and this is where i have to say things went south i think there's a bug somewhere in the pm tiles implementation of martin and i could be wrong i could be a giant idiot and i'm doing something dumb but I have this PM tiles file that's it's basically that tiles MB tiles file just sent through PM tiles just PM tiles convert you know that to PM tiles and I know that PM tiles file is good PM tiles serve works it fine it will serve these tiles fine it's sitting on Cloudflare and I'm using PM tiles on the client end in map Libre and serving tiles just fine I know this PM tiles file is good. PM tiles show shows it to be a perfectly good file. But if I pick a, like if I just take that, and I know I have this tiles dash PM tiles, I get tile not found. And I know that tile is there. I know it's there. <laughs> it works everywhere else. So there's something going on. If I had to guess, I mean, PM tiles, to, to use them, you have to translate your ZXY request into a range request over that PM tiles file. I, I bet you that's where something's going wrong. I don't know if they just Hard, maybe hard coded in they expect the PM tiles to be like a world file world size or because my PM tiles is, is a much smaller area I don't know what's going on there but something's going on and I'm gonna dig into the rust a little bit code when I get a chance I'm not a big rust person but rust is a very nice language and if you have programmed in anything you can generally speaking tell what's going on in rust when you look at it 
and I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on there. Um, uh, I, I usually like to do that before I, I post like an issue because I want to give people the most information I can because, you know, people are busy and they're doing a nice thing. You don't want to hassle them. But that was the only thing. If I can figure that out, this could, Martin could easily replace the three different ways I'm doing the stuff that Martin is doing with much less RAM and in most cases much faster. So two giant thumbs up for Martin. I really like it. Um, it's it's nice. And I, I have poked through the Rust code a little bit just to see if I could figure out what's going on with the PM tiles. And it's it's really, that that is some clean code. <laughs> it, it's, it's really nice. So it's a great project. I recommend you give it a shot, uh, the PM tiles part. Again, I could be an idiot um, and, and doing something wrong here, but I don't think so because there's not a whole lot to set up for the PM tiles. And it knows the PM tiles file is there and it's serving it and it's just, it's just, I don't think it's translating that ZXY correctly, so it's coming back with tile not found when there it, it should be finding this. Anyway, that was Martin. I hope you enjoy that and give it a shot. And if I did do something really dumb with this PM tiles here, and that's why I'm not seeing this work, please let me know. And I can, uh, at the very least, uh, run my face into a wall. Okay, I will check you later. Bye-bye.